Hello. If it crashes today, that's it. I'm not doing it again because I can't be bothered with all the hassle. Anyway, we're doing charcoal portrait today. Uh, this is the technique. This is what it just charcoal on gesso paper <coughs> and removing the lights. So, a lot of you will know how to do it if you come into class and demonstrations. Um, this is another using a bit more pastel in that and more glazing. Uh, this has got a few more glazes over <coughs> uh, varnish, so you varnish them and then we can build them up to start using opaque paint because the underpainting on this is a charcoal and acrylic and then we can start using uh, you're doing figurative work as well which works quite well and putting the colour on first which is another stage but we haven't got much time today again we've only got an hour don't try and work along with me uh, <coughs> just stop the video if it's still going <laughs> by the end and uh, I'll put the end result on anyway uh, so this is the image we actually uh, I've put it online, which I've done it quite a few times this one. Every time I do it, it's different. Uh, I do like the, uh, the uh, picture though, so I'm not trying to get a likeness. That's really the first thing you say. I don't want to get a likeness. I just want to get um, uh, an aesthetically pleasing picture or painting. All right? That's what I learned at uni. And uh, so you change the image to be something else okay um we use a willow charcoal a bit compressed charcoal which is black pastel and white pastel as well and a razor that's your willow which is a bit of burnt wood you need a jar of water with a big brush a palette for mixing color because they're going to be the glazes and then you need a hair dryer which i'm going to dry it off with to speed things up so like i said we're going to go an hour need some acrylic paint again which is a uh, gallery acrylic uh, just using one coat one color today and then we can varnish it and work back into it okay so the first thing i'm going to do is cover the whole paper so this is paper those who know what we do will know that it is uh lining paper and it's got a coat of uh winsley newton gallery acrylic gesso on the top which makes it uh, waterproof and it makes it stops the paint from soaking in we don't have to do it all over i'm just kind of blocking in a mid-tone value all over the picture at the moment uh -huh. uh, <coughs> blend it so you get a flat gray tone which is going to actually be the grays in the, uh, the portrait the photograph which is a black and white image again we're using black and white image and you can add your own color use your imagination i hope everybody's uh, still safe and not too bored like i am bored at my tree but uh anyway there we go flat tone and i'm going to draw the head now using willow charcoal again yeah <coughs> um i'm looking at the little girl it's a victorian picture it's got a lovely uh lovely eyes i want to get the chin on and i want to get the top of her head on and the hair is all waving in the background so i don't want to kind of draw every hair on her head i want to just draw the shape so because i want the shape of her face which is this egg and she's actually looking more or less towards me so you could have a slight angle if she turns that way but we'll keep it simple and we'll draw a straight line in the center of the egg <coughs> like that and because the eyes are level you can find out by drawing a line and they're always in the middle of the egg like that then we put a line in the middle roughly yeah and the hair kind of um, goes on top of the egg you know so it goes higher than that so you've got these lovely shapes around the face you know later and things like that so don't worry about um, adding a hair at this time as long as the eye position is halfway between the and your chin which is the bottom of the egg so if you look at it now <coughs> all the features are going to be in this part of the face yeah so i always start by putting a socket in the head's about five sockets wide and we put uh, it's a child so we make the sockets 
nice and big. Uh, let me know then if it freezes so I can run round and start it or whatever happens. And because she's looking more or less towards me, she's looking actually just slightly that way. But if I put the pupil in the middle like that and then the iris and the top eyelid, what you would do is just move the eye over slightly, put the pupil. So the pupil's near enough in the middle, uh, the iris and then the top eyelid inside that so uh, circle. That socket, the eyebrows are on top of the socket, you can see where they change tone. The reason we use willow is we can do this. You can just smudge it and blend it very easily to make the correct tone of body. Okay. So that should be the correct distance between the eyes. Uh, don't worry about it, don't start saying no, it's not, it's too wide and things like that. It's the correct distance. You've got quite a bit going on here. Uh, it's quite dark in that area, uh, so we can blend that a little bit. And the nose is just slightly off centre, like I said, so it's a slight curve really, but uh, we do the nose just slightly to the right, uh, to the left. That side's the same tonal value as the cheeks because the light's coming from that direction. And this side is in the shadow, and that's the tip of the nose where they get a white ball actually, and then underneath there is where it sits on the face. So because it's a child, we've got ski jump going on. Nice and dark inside here. Blend it, yep. And make the eyes nice and big. Don't worry about them being too big. Much better being too big than too small. Um, <clears throat> and then we've got the philtrum. The mouth is usually halfway between the and the chin. So your philtrum is the next thing, which is the bit between the nose and the top lip. And then in the middle of the top lip, You've got three muscles there, you've got the middle muscle and you've got the side muscles that give you the shape of the mouth and she's only got a little, just a little uh, bottom lip and we get to the bottom of the egg and as you can see I've run out of chin so I make the chin bigger because we can do that because we're artists. So there from a bottom lip which is that shape, only slight, uh, we've got a shadow here which is that and then we've got the light catching the lip catching the chin there and then you've got the shadow under the chin so that should give you the shape of her face and if I look at the side of the head that's where the eye lashes are quite dark and look at the side of the head it's quite dark here and then you get angles so we've got a shape coming in from this left hand side going to the cheekbone and then she's got a lovely kind of chubby faces so uh, we just blend that away the side of the head into that shadow and then they do the same thing here. Think about angle, angle of the jaw, angle of the chin, rather than, and all that blends into the back of the egg. She's got a lovely curl there, a kiss curl, and the shadow of the hair on her head, like that. Get rid of the lines if you don't want them, because it gets a bit confusing. And then uh, the top lip's always in shadow, quite full, yeah, nice and soft. Go do a, a continuous line all across the mouth. Just kind of break it up like that. Um, nice wide eyes. Get rid of the bags. She doesn't have any bags. She has a lovely bit of skin there that catches the light just under the iris. Like that. Same on both sides. You just get rid of the bags. And if you get everything in the right place, it st should start to look like her. But like I said, we're not after a lightness. So don't worry about that too much. Just worry about trying to make it look like a child. So I've got some nice hair. I'll block that in because it's quite uh, it's quite dark around the face here, uh, the hair, and, and it blends. Like I said, it blends onto a forehead, so it casts a shadow there, and it also casts a shadow down the side of her head here. Got a lovely negative space there, which is some curls. And as we're coming down here, we've got the back of her neck, which is coming in that direction. Uh, you've got shoulder here. Uh, this is the strap on a, a top and it's nice and light so we can keep that nice and light and that's the top of her arm which is slightly darker um, and that's the dark the other shoulder yeah which is all the same tone if we look at the neck it's just a little line just underneath that bottom lip that top lip there so we draw a line like that and then that goes off the picture and that's as simple as that really 
and then I'm going to use a, um, a tissue to get rid of a lot of the um, mid-tone values in the, in the charcoal and then we're going to add uh, uh, use a, um, a rubber we can look at the background here and her uh, hair it's quite dark so I'll just blend that in a bit uh -huh. I'm trying to be quite quick because I don't want to uh, I need to get to the stage where we glaze it and varnish it well if we can varnish it that'll be alright but not necessarily whatever we can get to within the hour near enough yeah because we have to go and get some meat from butchers um, and we're blending that uh -huh. into the face okay so I've put that down, uh, get a bit of tissue, kitchen roll, use the kitchen roll to give you this lovely highlight. So if we look at the forehead, there's a lovely light across the forehead, uh -huh. and then it gets slightly darker on this side, so we don't take it too much off because we want it to blend. And uh, then the hair's catching the light there as well, and some of the curls. Uh, here we've got the light just above a top eyelid there. Uh, usually it's a little bit lighter. You get some reflected lights underneath and it's slightly darker between the eyes there. And here we've got the, the middle of the nose which is a lot of light coming off that. And then the corner of the eye and going into the cheekbones there. Uh, on this side we've got the same thing but more light. Yeah. Uh, and it's the, the cheekbone turning to the cheek where the softness is. Yeah, and then a lovely soft light over the top lip. Uh, the nostril is in there underneath, not put it in yet. Uh, this little nostril here, and the light just coming down at the side of that nostril. Filtrum, you can't get my finger too small though. That's the filtrum. Uh, the bottom lip's catching a little bit of light. This side of the mouth is a bit lighter, and then the, the light on her chin. So that kind of blends in. And this is still quite dark in tone around that area. All right. And then the, the chest or the shoulder. <coughs> and just rub out the, this nice highlight on the shoulder. And a bit on the... Um, entirely up to you. If you want to leave a line in or blend it or whatever you want to do. So we're going... Are we still on? Yeah. Good. Okay. Um, we're going uh, to use the rubber. So if you're doing a hair, we can just pull out some of these curls, yeah, there's no way on earth you can put everyone, everyone in, not in this time frame anyway, uh, the curl there is important if you want to put it in, and some of this in a hair which you just scumble, and then the forehead, so the top of the forehead you've got to get a little bit of light, uh, down to the top of her eyebrow, so I'm just using the rubber, uh, if, it's, if it's dirty just clean it with a damp cloth, I'm just using the rubber to go back to my white gesso underneath. This is why your gesso is so important. Then I get a reflected light there, blend it with your finger. Uh, we get the half moon shape side of her eyes, and then you get the light catching the bit underneath the eye there. Like that. I'm going to have to stand back now and again just to see her face so I don't get uh, the eye there. A bit of light uh, right in the tear duct area. And then the bridge of um, the cheekbone, sorry, in there, which blends together around here. Okay. Um, a highlight, it's there. We can put that in with a bit of pastel later. The bridge of a nose, that blends into there. And then the tip of a nose, very light. So it's slightly coming towards you there. Um, you can see the reflected light around the nostril and then the filter. The filter is always in the middle of the nose, uh -huh. so where you get the highlight here, you need to have the filter just over to one side, man. and then the top of the top lip, you've got to bring out that, take a little bit of light off near this nostril, it's slightly lighter here, again, highlight, uh, tear duct, bring that down to there, blend it, Take the charcoal off if you need to, and that goes into the side of the head. It's a bit more space than if you look. Uh -huh. So you've got a slightly turning, and then there's some more curls around here. Uh -huh. More curls, you've got a line there now. Top lips, got uh, reflected light slightly, 
Uh, bottom lip's got a bit a bit of light on it there, and then a uh, side of a mouth. Lovely softness. So you just take the light off the side of a mouth. Go do a continuous line. Uh, take the light off. That's the chin. That blends into the rest of uh, um, the neck. So we don't want to, like a line between the neck. I know you can see a little bit here where it's getting some reflection. And then we take the light off this bit. That's what's the strap on the shoulder. You can see how light you can get. And then you've got this lovely light here on the top of the curly hair. Curly hair. And we've got some on these curls here. Uh, which I'm going to use some compressed charcoal there to, to bring out those. Yeah. Um, again, look at the shape of things. Don't be too fussy. Don't put too much in. Want it really loose. Uh, that strap comes down here. It was off the picture. And then I've got one here as well. Which, uh, I left a bit more weight at the bottom of this um, area. She has got a shadow there as well, which is... Uh, coming from this uh, strap. So sometimes it's nice to leave a line where you get in like uh, uh, the shadow from that one on, on her shoulder. And it's also casting a shadow here because the light's going from that direction. Again, uh, keep the eyes nice and wide. Keep standing in the middle. <coughs> then again, and then we'll blend a cheek again because that's a little bit too dark. That's all I need really to uh, glaze it. You start thinking, well, what about your eyelashes and your eyebrows? We don't want too much fuss. We just want to position things and then we're going to glaze and remove the, the colour or the tones with a damp cloth. I'm just looking at the shapes around the nose. It's got three triangles, one in the middle. And there's more light on the centre, and then at the side it goes slightly lighter because the light's going to this light, and then it goes darker on this side. Yeah. So if I'm just trying to create that softness before I fix it, because once you fix it, so I've got uh, yeah? um, so I've got the the top eyelid. This is compressed charcoal. Only do this when you're happy with positioning. Really, uh, you can move things. You know, it's nothing set in stone yet. That's the top eyelid, a pupil. So that's how the eye is made, kind of made up. And she's looking at you. You'll get a little bit of dark in the tear up. Top eyelid always overlaps the bottom eyelid, like that. Uh, your nostril, a little bit on that side. And on this side, you can see the nostril there. This is just a dark shape. And again, the corners of the mouth, you drop a line down from the iris and that will be the width of the mouth which is not that wide and the same on the other side really just about there and then you just do the dirt bit in the corners of the mouth and then the middle muscle and that's it because that gives you a softness you can just see the makings of a line uh, inside the, the, uh, the lip and then that's the shadow again <coughs> keep dropping it uh, I'm just using the, this um, the compressed charcoal to put some darker tones where the curls are and that will make them come forward. Uh, so where the, you've got a curl there like that, uh, don't block in bigger areas because it just runs like that. So you've got a really nice sh uh, shadow actually from that direction, which is the light cutting across the, uh, from the neck. Okay. And then that's softening uh, the shape around the neck. Again here, I've got some of these curls, side of a face, and then that goes off the picture. So I'm not too worried about that. Uh, so you've got a nice curl there as well. I'm put that uh, just pick out a few. Um, again, we'll use the rubber just to take the light. So I'm going to fix it. I'm going to fix it. If you take the light off the bottom of the eye, there, that's where the colour will be. So that's where I take the light on the bottom of her eye. Uh, the half moon shapes at the side of her eye positions the, uh, the eyeball. So you've got more on this left hand side really, because that's in shadow there. Um, and then like, when we put the colour in, give her different coloured eyes after. Like I said, we don't worry too much about the highlight because that's pure white and we're going to use a lot of uh, 
I'll use some pasta for that later. So the thickness of a bottom eyelid, like that, catching the light, uh, and lovely negative spaces in the background. Okay, nice and simple. Give it a spray. <coughs> so we'll start coughing. Let me stand over here, it's not too bad. Yeah, so, is that your mum? I'm going to spray it all over, like that. Make sure you spray the uh, compressed bit. Otherwise, it's going to run like mad. Uh, we need to dry it off, so I've got my hair dry to speed things up. I won't talk while it's dry, it's spraying, it's drying, okay? And the easiest thing to check then is when it's dry, you just put your finger, a clean finger, if you can, just take the excess charcoal off with a damp cloth and go over the, uh, the compressed charcoal bits and if it doesn't come off, you'll be okay to glaze, can you see? And some of it might blend with misfits, but uh, it's not too bad though. Uh, but the majority of that black is just not coming off, so I'll be okay to um, glaze it with some colour. And I'm going to speed that up as well. The bags are time. Like it's a term, yeah. Because uh, at this point, you usually wait for people to catch up. So, because I'm not doing, we can work a lot quicker. All right. Uh, but take your time doing it. You don't have to rush to do anything. So there, I've just got some Ben Sienna Galleria acrylics. I put some in a palette, in a palette in the deep well. Added a lot of water, and I'm going to mix that together. To give me a glaze and a glaze is that there you go sorry i'm just checking your voices out oh, i thought you no ah, as long as it's still good that's right and last time I, I started hearing my voice instead of it taping it uh, live so you don't have to put my voice on i'm okay. getting because i'm going i'm listening for that anyway because it's dry and it's glazing the whole thing with some bird sienna um, it's a bit too bright on there, but, uh, uh, but picks up the charcoal, gives you kind of burnt umber look to it. You'll get some runs and drips, that's all that, I don't mind them. Um, the majority of the face, I don't want to be runny or drippy, so I can get a, a soft brush and pull away any drips. That's just start crying and things, you don't want to. Just get nice soft areas in the face. Uh, you can leave shadows, you can leave drips in the hair and her eyes and you give a softness there with the eyes. Uh, you don't have to go down to the bottom of the picture. We can leave some, so if I do some warm here as well and then leave it on the other side. Uh, just dry your brush off to drag colour away or runs away actually. And then I'm just adding a bit more warm on oh, the flesh tone there. Doesn't really matter. Because you can always glaze, glaze it again later. Yeah? Um, like that, and soften it. Again, I need to dry it off. Otherwise, if I start rubbing out the, uh, the charcoal and the glaze now, I will go uh, right back to the white paper, you can see. So it's a bit too, it's a bit too damp. But if you dry it off, you have to work a little bit harder, but you can control. You control how much you take off. Get a clean, clean one. It's going to topple a bit as well. Oh. 
Uh, if he does cockle and we've got some good quality masking tape, so uh, he, can, he can pull it off like that and stretch it a little bit so you get rid of the bubbles or the wet bits of paper like that. And it will stretch, but you don't have to because it can go flat later. Uh, people go mad about cockles and muscles. Um, so that's okay, and then I've got my damp cloth. Um, not too much water on it, and people keep dipping it in the pads, in the pots with the water in it, and you're actually picking up too much water. You just want it to be damp, and you want a proper cloth, you don't want tissues or J cloth or anything like that. So if I look at the picture again, some of my underpainting, a lot of it actually, still there, and that's what I want to use uh in the picture so uh, to give me these nice kind of softness curls which are, i've used with the rubber uh keep build straight and then the light on the forehead because you get this lovely highlight down to the the, the um, eyebrow there and it does come out a little bit in the eyebrow a little bit nearer uh, i always keep the forehead kind of bit flat in the middle nice work circles at the top there where they go a little bit lighter, like that, you'll start to see the, uh, the, the brush marks from my uh, gesso coming out now, which gives you the texture, which people always say, where do you get the texture on? Well, it's actually there all the time. Soften the side of the head, the bit underneath the eyebrows. I'm trying not to take too much off, just do it slowly. You can see the thickness of our, our eyelid at the top. You can also see that stick your little a finger into the cloth to be, remove the uh, the light under the eye and the bottom eyelid, like I said, the bottom of the eye and the reflection is going to be there, but uh, we need it brighter than that. There's a half moon shape on this side, it's quite big, not as much on this side, but you are getting that light inside the eye. Look at the shapes around the eye and you'll end up with a proper uh, proper looking eye really. And we're going to work back into that to bring it out a bit. So I'll just spread it a bit more. Cause... And once you start getting it damp again, it comes off easier. Look at the picture. You are using the picture as your reference, like I said. So we want to look at the picture and we want to bring out these little changes in tone. Uh, get rid of the bags, like I said, you can soften that area. It's just the soft tissue, and then that comes down into the cheek. So the majority of this side of the face is catching the light. Uh, in between the eyes, it's a little bit darker, like I said. And then we get the nose, nice highlight on the end of the nose, bridge of the nose. That changes into another tone, which is quite light. And then here, reflections above the bottom of um, the nostril, sorry and around the nostril you see some lights as well like that. Uh, then that goes into a nice light at the top of uh, a lip which is a triangle shape like that, which brings out the filter again make it nice and light, light that u shape soften it a bit don't want it too harsh or silly cold so we get a nice softness to that side of the mouth and then a little bit lighter to this side of the mouth just to bring out the top lip and that will give you softness around the mouth uh, also underneath there you've got a nice reflected light reflected lights that make, that make the painting three-dimensional this blends into the cheek and it disappears into the background so I don't want to do too much of that and then over this side again we've got reflected light here and we've got the shape the side of a head here because this is getting a reflection but we don't want it as light as this side which you can take more off once you start taking highlights out uh, do the same thing inside the eye there you've got a lovely strong light comes into the cheek there and then blends with the rest of the face slightly. and this side of a nose uh, is a little bit lighter not much and then all that blends into the forehead. 
Uh, so again, over the eyebrow is uh, a little bit lighter over that eyebrow, and then that blends into the rest of the forehead. Yeah. So we're just taking the tones off to represent the colours, and that's it. So I'll just do it. All right. Uh, bottom of the eye colour again. Uh, the half moon shape. Right. Um, the bottom eyelid, which catches the light. Uh, the softness underneath the bottom eyelid. That angle going to the cheek. Right. And then that blends into the rest of the cheek. In the mouth, we got a, a reflected light on the middle muscle. Um, down the side of the mouth, the other two uh, muscles, three muscles in there, gives you a nice soft mouth, and then the bottom lip catches a little bit of light. That is the um, light on the chin. What actually happens is your face goes a little bit darker usually towards the bottom of the egg, so you don't want to go as light as up here because that's where the highlights are going to be. Yeah. Right. So I can pay, I can take the lights off around the head as well, and if it actually gets a bit too dry because it's wet, it's really hot in there. You can wet it, splatter it, give you some textures, like that. something on the floor, uh, and that will help with background shape. So we can have a lovely negative at the back of the head there that blends into the shapes around. Uh, her hair, the curly hair, negative space, that blends into the side of the head. Uh, just be careful with the face, you don't want to splatter big areas. That still have weird marks. Okay. With this technique, you can stop wherever you want. You can say, oh, I like it, it is, I'm going to stop now. It's an RD, no, I'm not. And then, um, or you can just carry on until you uh, overwork it, <laughs> okay, fits in now. But yeah, you can carry on, you can get the highlight there, it blends into that area. That's the shoulder. I've got a few runs there, which are working well for shapes. Uh, this is the light, sorry. This is the light on here, so I'm just gonna use a damp brush to mm -hmm. take that off. Hmm? Can you do that? Use a damp brush. It just helps you to remove more colour, more tone, and then that goes into a shoulder which is quite light as well. And uh, we can use some pastel there, uh, white pastels. Side of a mouth, you've got a little bit of reflecting light. And if you find yourself going too light, you can always go over it with some charcoal, willow charcoal. Uh, nostril, squint, highlight, nose, this side of the nose, blend it, and you got top of the eye, where the highlight's going to be, uh, shapes under the eye. Okay, again, I'm just going to wet this area to bring out the top of the shoulder. Uh, and that right. So I can take the light off at the back of the head, between the hair, blend the shoulder into the rest of the neck. Yeah. And may that disappear slightly, like I said, so you don't have a continuous line. And then remove the light in the background. You can play about with the background so it's lighter, darker. And just keep rubbing, yeah, to get curly hair, curly hair. Um, I'll take a, a neck in a little bit, so it's coming down from here. Don't have it too wide. <coughs> so that's the neck, and that's the shoulder. We can redraw now, get some compressed, make sure it's dry a bit. Uh, use the compressed again for the eyes, pupil, top eyelid, they will just stand out now. 
because this is a lot stronger. So the pupil, papala, the iris, uh, top eyelid, corners of the mouth, middle muscle, corners of the mouth. Don't do too much under the bottom left. Don't do too much here. You don't want it too dark. We can we we can use this as a just to emphasise the shape of her face there and her hair with the curls or whatever. Again, curls, piggly piggly, soften them. Uh, nice and dark here because we've got some darker areas against the background. Uh, just dirting that curl. Um, you don't have to put curls in. It's entirely up to you. You've got a few shapes up there as well. Put them in, blend them, soften them. Uh, we we'll keep the chin a bit. But it's a little bit darker than that. And we'll keep this. All right. Again, you can, do it. You can have a lovely light shirt uh, next to a, a lovely dark shirt. And it's still going. Yeah. Not kick good. me off. No. Good. Good Being good today. Uh, so that's going to be the neck, and then I get the shape of the shoulder. Yeah. Just some like that. Uh, and that's a strap, and then this is a shadow on that thing. It's sometimes nice just to have a, a line at the bottom so it kind of links a drawing into a three dimensional kind of image. Okay, her eyebrows are not very dark and there's nothing else very dark apart from her eyes. So I need to spray it again. I'm doing for town. Yeah. Uh, need to spray it again. Just to fix everything. That's if you're happy with it. So you stand back. Okay. Um, fix it. Like that. And then. Um, let that dry. So I need my hair dryer again. <coughs> and I'm going to use a bit of white pasta. We see a pure highlights now, which are white, are the lights in her eyes there, both eyes. Uh -huh. You've got some white in the corner where the tear duct is, uh -huh. and the bottom eyelid, which I've already done, but we can add a bit more, which goes into a shape at the side of her thing. So you can glaze over this, but so don't put it too thick, uh, you probably wash it off. The light on the nose. We'll have two little spots there and then in the middle of the nose, about there, because that just changes direction. Uh, around the nostril, it's quite light there actually. You can just rub these out if you like. At the top of a filter, you shape on the top of a top lip, it's quite light. All right. And we've got a lovely bit of light and lip. Okay, and then uh, like we'll use this for the light of a top. Again, here. You don't have to do it all, just pick out the shape around uh, where the light will be catching things. It's up to you. Uh, you can use white paint. It's nice to see the transparency, actually. We're going to give her blue eyes, I think. So I'll just rub out the light and just do it again. Rub out the light at the bottom of her eye. That gives you the marble effect. The reason we're doing this is because we're doing, we're using transparent colour and transparent glazes. So every time you do a glaze, you've got to see through it. So everything you put underneath is going to come through the glaze. So that's all we're doing really. Uh, a bit of cerulean blue. And I don't want it too opaque, so I just put my finger in it, a bit of it, uh -huh. put it on, uh -huh. wipe my finger and then take it off again. Because you want to see 
through the blue again like I said so you get that transparent glare stuff yeah we can look into the background as well and that's going to dry I'm not, I wouldn't do the whites of her eyes you can just lift off the colour out of the tone with your damp cloth don't do too much uh, opaque paint because you're going to spoil it actually because you want to keep this transparent set okay chin keep working around it stand back down again if you're happy with it leave it <coughs> stamp your feet top of the forehead like i said her here is a little bit lighter we could use some uh, charcoal for that uh, pastel white pastel uh, negative space in between the curls and the hair i got some nice textures there where the water's dripped a bit and uh, the back of her head here we can emphasize the light at the back of her so there's a depth behind the head but you need to blend that in just have it strong light you can do the same here actually right, so it's nice and it's a little bit darker where the neck starts and so on. So there's a nice depth at the back of the head, the space. I hope you're working along. <laughs> we usually have two hours to do this. We got to the stairs last time where we were glazing it, varnishing it and glazing it. We can varnish it. Again, a little bit more off the eye. But the only thing I use for darks are uh, uh, compressed charcoal. Black. Soften the mouth again. Corners of the mouth. Get rid of the black areas because you want to make it curved. So here, you start squinting now and you can see where slightly lighter here then it disappears up into I've got some blue there from the, from her eye up into that curl and then it goes off up into uh, the back of her head or whatever into the back room mm. a bit more white and we're going to use some white for uh, uh, to put into the hair actually um, and not a lot it's just where little bits of things are being caught by the, the light, little bits of the hair being caught by the light, like uh, the tips. Um, there's a bit over here, it's quite nice. That's that curl actually, which is quite nice. And then you get another things. But again, put it on, take it off. Um, we've got reflective light down the side of the face. If it doesn't work, just get rid of it. I'll leave it a bit softer. <coughs> if you do start to use the background like this, you have to keep it up. So, and see what happens because it's opaque, it just flattens the whole thing and you lose the transparency. So with too much pastel work will make you lose that uh, Transparency, but sometimes it's good just to have it in the background just to give you a little bit of light the back of the head and depth. Okay, keep looking around a bit. We've got a bit more light here, and that's softer. Inside there is a little bit softer. Uh, it is quite dark, but then you get a nice reflected light. And then the top of the nose blends into corner of the eye so you get quite a distance there between the eyes nice softness and if nothing else you've got a lovely under painting for an oil painting or an acrylic painting and it's quite it's done quite quick so if you get something to sit for you you can do it <coughs> don't forget the forehead lights at the top, little triangles at the side, like that, and it's getting a little bit lighter there. Tamara, it's still going. Quarter to two. Eh? Nearly quarter to two. Quarter to two. So, 
I'll fix it, varnish it. Don't think we'll get to it next day, but never mind. Fix it, varnish it. Use the cloth to get more off that. You can't be fussy with the, your finger and the cloth. And that's, uh, that's the way you can get these last uh, soft areas. Okay. Instead of being too fixed. Oops, got blue in her face again. Picked it up. Should dry quite quick by that time. Uh, top of the mouth. Yeah. <laughs> better doing it with the cloth if you can rather than the pastel. Just put that in at the end really. Yeah. And light on the cheekbone, that's it. Fix it. Again, as per. Uh, make sure you've got the pure white in her eyes because uh, And your varnish goes, they go a little bit dark, that darker. Yeah, make sure you've got everything. And uh, air dryer. Smells like a hairdresser's in here, man. Air spray, air dryer. Air spray is just to hold the charcoal. Varnish it, you can't do any more of that ruby night. Okay, Kevin was asking me about the varnish. It's on sale, interior water base varnish. On an oily wood. Yeah. So I make again make sure. Nothing's coming off. Uh, get the lid off. Once you've varnished it, you put loads of different glazes on there. Uh, make sure your brush is clean. Start with the eyes, because that's where the whites are. And then just go all over the picture. Uh, it goes on white and dries. Um, excuse me. Dries. It, well, it looks blue under this light. But it's, uh, it dries matte or satin. It's, uh, the hardest part to get it on is the thicker parts of the charcoal because it just glides over the top. So just make sure you, you go over the thick bits. <coughs> and because it's water based, it softens it again. So you actually, if you're not careful, you want to rub it out again. Yeah. Just want slightly nice blends. Okay, like that too, you can scumble, take it off. Put your brush in your water because it's uh, quick dry varnish. Again, hair dryer. Speed it up. I bet it's a bit shiny, is it? Yeah. And if you're going to shine, it's because of the varnish and the window behind me. So you can actually see you get rid of the shine. <coughs> yeah, that's right, really quick. Quick dry varnish. Mm. And 
that's a hairdryer. And then clean your brush and just use a bit of colour to, to glaze it with. You can always rub the colour out if you don't like it because it's a glaze, so don't worry. Right. Make sure your brush is clean and not got white in it. Uh, a little bit of alizarine, I think. And then a bit of blue. Well, that makes purple. And we've always used sienna, so that makes warm colour. Uh, you can add any colour you like. Has it gone off? No, no. Oh, I thought you were telling me it off. So if you use alizarine, like that, you get a nice softness. Yeah. You don't have to do it everywhere. And you can rub it out as well. And because it's varnished, it's not going to go anywhere. And I use a bit of blue at the top. Or you can mix them together. You know. A bit of blue and I'll do it. It's purple. She's got purple hair. And let it run. It is a glaze. You can see through it. It's got a lot of water in it. She's had a blue rinse. Blue eyes. Uh, more warms if you want. Yeah. I do like the ones and drips, but so sometimes. You can rub out again on that. You can rub out, yeah. So, because keep it nice and soft in the flesh tone. Again, if you want to stop anything running, just air dry it. Because it's a glaze and you've still got your lovely colour uh, contrast underneath, I can rub out the colour to go back to my white glazes underneath. My white uh, highlights and contrast. So you can bring it out again. So it's the old oil painting technique. Instead of using oil, we just use acrylics and remove paint and the tone of eyes. And you've got, like I said before, you've got a lovely start to another picture. And I'll just show you another bit. Because you were saying, it's lost all these white bits, aren't you? So I've got a little bit of white paint, small brush, You just have to be careful because nothing is kind of pure white except for the light in her eyes. And if I use this white with a bit of sienna or alizarine, I can repaint things like that. The lights in her eyes, yeah. Uh, the light at the tip of her nose. When you put it on, just touch it with your finger to soften it. You get a highlight, a uh, bridge. It's about there, when it goes flat, uh, filter them, nice light area there. That's just bringing things forward again. If we want to do the eyes, the lights of her eyes, we can just, because it's an eyeball, it's the middle section of the eye that gets most of the light, which is there. Each side of the the iris, you know? so it's bringing it forward. Uh, if you want to use white on a lip and a lizardine, again we can put some on a lip again. Just to add a bit of colour. She's got lipstick, right? Uh, a bit on her bottom lip. And if you want to really go to town, which is what we do later, we can add uh, oh, more white to this uh, the shape of a 
top. Don't just block everything in, just have uh, the light catching things, you see. Just going to bring it out. You can always get rid of it if you're not happy before it dries. So don't worry. Don't worry about uh, anything on this virus thingy. Apparently some lions, some tags have got it in. In a, in a zoo in America, yeah. So it travels to the Just use a bit of blue and white actually to bring out. That's the grandson if you can hear him. Back ring, blend it, and bits behind the head. I'm fiddling, eh? Yeah, you were actually fiddling. Am I? Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's what yeah, I mean. You, you can just get Kenny, so yeah, it's nice, is it? Yeah, it's a bit too much. So I just yeah. add the light on mm -hmm. the tip of the nose to make the nose come out um, and reflections and whatever. So it's just highlights now because you've got a lovely contrast there. Okay, um, that will dry. Uh, I'll just do some out. I'll just put. I've got some reflected blue and I've got some uh, opaque blue. So they're both blue, one's cerulean, one's ultramarine. Take the tape off. Like that, without tearing it. <coughs> well, hmm? <laughs> well. A bit. Uh, Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> Just a bit it's too warm in here. No, yeah, we need to get out. There you go. I enjoy doing that. I like working fast. Yeah, it's bad. Stand back. That's right. I'm dropping off again. You had a great big studio. There you go, finished, more or less. I could carry on with it, but that's all we're doing in an hour. And that's the idea of charcoal and acrylic glazes technique, which is an oil painting technique, but we're using acrylic instead of oils. And you could work over it with oils if you wanted. I'll just carry on glazing with acrylics. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, probably see you Wednesday, not to show you that. If not, it could be Friday. Uh, but I'll put it on the yeah. page because I'm going to start doing something else. At the time. And I know I do drippy portraits, but throwing paint about in here is not going to work very well, so I need a bigger <laughs> studio. All right, thank you. Put your, stuff, put your work online. And that's where everybody can see it. And we'll all say how wonderful it is. And stay safe. Bye. Uh...